Hey, it's Francis. Um, and today I'm going to keep working on my dungeon EP. Um, and my uh, goal for today is to make something that feels good about um, being called this. So sometimes I'll name my tracks before I start them. And um, I'll use that as a way of, um, of inspiring myself to make some music. So I've named this one Trapped Beneath Rusted Bars. <laughs> And, um, basically I'm going to try to get like the, the feeling of, uh, you know, water dripping down into a sewer dungeon that's, you know, connected to some other dungeon. I don't know. Something like that. Um, I'm imagining like an underground level in a fantasy game or something like that. So, um, here's my session setup. It is, um, again, going to be, uh, instances of resynth as my primary sound source. And I'm uh, using reverb on that uh, reverb default, um, whatever it's called, uh, Sweet Verbo, as my reverb. So um, this is something that you could recreate uh, theoretically with just um, stock reaper without adding any plugins. And um, I'm hoping some of you feel inspired to do that as a result of watching these videos. Um, this reverb's probably too loud. Um, anyway, I am going to uh, jump over to share my links I think and I like doing that uh, manually because it shows that I'm a um, I don't know <laughs> hard-working streamer <laughs> um, so I'm gonna post these on the entered webs the entered webs yeah you know what? I'm just gonna post on Twitter I want to make some music type um, so, oh, I guess I should have my comments open in case someone bothers me. Um, and I like being bothered on these. It makes me do better work. Anyway, um, my starting point for uh, inspiration here is going to be um, the idea of um, maybe like escaping a, an underground dungeon or underground lair or something in like a fantasy setting and um, hearing the drip of water. So like... Um, Maybe the dungeon is connected to the sewer system of some city, and that's the first uh, the first uh, dead giveaway that you're on your way out. But you find the the grating, and it's like rusted out grating, and it's it's like uh, I don't know, you're trapped, you're stuck. So I'm gonna start with a, um, a sort of a dripping water type of a sound, and I'm gonna start with this pluck. Um, it's not quite where I want it to be to be a, a dripping water thing yet. But I'm going to imagine that it is and do the sound design after I have some notes. So, um, I want it to be kind of a slow song. I'm just going to pick uh, arbitrary 73 <laughs> BPM. And um, I'm just going to do this with a MIDI sequence. Let's see here. Um, maybe a little bit lower pitch. Okay, that's um, pretty close to what I want. Um, and I'm going to add the, to the release here, I think. Um, I'm going to loop this and do a bit of sound design. I know I'm going to want a filter. Um, and I think I might want to thin the sound out, maybe use an EQ, I'm not sure. I'll use re-EQ as my filter. How's that? Um, I always just, I'm going to expect to pull a bunch of low end out. Um, if you are new to this stuff and new to mixing, if you're not using a bass sound or like a bass drum, you can pretty much do this with every track. Like pull your, uh, like a high pass filter um, to, you know, as far as you need to. Just pull it over to somewhere below the lowest note. You can sort of see where the notes are. You can see that the lowest note's right here. So that that's just where that note sort of lives. And I think that's the lowest note I'm going to use, so I'm just going to pull the filter over to it. Um, and let's see here. Um, oh, I guess I should say that this filter isn't there by default. You see here my setting is called FCR default. That's um, my initials, FCR. And um, the factory default does not have that filter built in. And to get there, um, essentially... Two is usually band one on re-EQ, 
and it's a low shelf, and you would just go to this menu and choose uh, the filter you want. In this case, I'm using a high pass. Um, I'm also going to use a low pass filter though, and I have that. You see that I have that set up as well in my in my preset, and you would say save preset here from this little plus menu if you wanted to copy that. Let me make sure I'm not. Yeah, my face is not covering that. Cool. Okay. Um, these are great. Uh, the low pass filters are great for sort of lo-fying up a sound. But I think I want it to be a little bit squishy, so I'm going to give it a bit of um, a bit of resonance or a narrower bandwidth, which is going to create this uh, spike. And I'm going to um, automate it with a uh, with a side chain. Um, and this is going to function as an envelope for this. So. Um, That's pretty much what I want, but a quite a bit too strong. Something like that. And I'm going to give the synth a bit more release as well. Something like that, maybe. Um, and as a starting point, I think that's going to be good. And this is going to be sort of continuing. Um, and what happens when you get further away from something? Does it get higher in pitch or lower in pitch? Um, what's that What's that called? It's called uh, something's law. Um, I'm going to put that in the chat. And hopefully someone can answer that question because I can't remember how it works. Um, do things get lower or higher in pitch the further they get from your position. And I want to know the answer to that question because I want this to gradually change in pitch. I think that would be kind of a cool um, just thing to happen if this is going to represent that drip, um, the literal drip, not the like hip hop drip. And I'll keep this going a couple times and I'm going to try to create a part um, that complements this and makes it feel a bit more musical after um, after it repeats a few times. So I think I'm going to let it go for quite a while by itself. Maybe four times. And then I'm going to bring in um, maybe a bass sound, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Um, and what note was that? I just picked one. Uh, it's a G, okay. Um, I'll start on not a G, so it's going to give it um, Okay, and let's just see if that feels good. Uh, this is kind of a weird starting point, and I understand that, but I think it fits the theme that I'm going for. This is too extreme of a sound still. Um, Doppler effect. Yeah, Doppler effect. Thank you, Davey. That's that's what it's called. It's Doppler effect. But do you remember if it's uh, um, when something falls away from you, does it go, it goes, ah, uh, 
does it like get higher in pitch when it gets closer to you or lower in pitch as it gets closer to you? That's what I'm trying to remember. Um, and yeah. Hey, what's up? Good morning. It's morning. It's morning for you. Oh, you're, th are you three hours east of me? <laughs> Mech scrap tracks. I've never read your thing before. I know who you are, but I've never actually tried to read that, <laughs> that, uh, screen name. Um, in Ohio. Okay. Um, I want, um, stereo ping pong delay. That's the thing, right? Ping. Oh God. Delay with ping pong. Yeah. Okay. I knew there was one in Reaper. I usually actually use, um, this plugin for stereo ping pong echo. This is what I use in like, if you listen to my recordings, it's this, um, unless it's, um, someone else's journey which is the other, um, the other EP that I've uh, released in, um, in this style where I'm using um, just a stock Reaper plugins. So um, I'm trying to recreate that basically. It gets lower in pitch, okay, cool. Um, so I think that means that I want to get lower in pitch as this song progresses. I'm gonna make a mental note of that. And um, so this delay, I want it to be a pretty quick delay with wide ping pong. Ping pong delay is when your delay enters in your uh, left or your right channel instead of in the same channel as your um, as your original sound. Oh yeah, ambulances. That's a great example for that. Ambulances just sound like synthesizers with a wild LFO, huh? It's like, it, it's perfect. Um, so I want um, tempo sync delay is going to be, how about like, um, is this milliseconds? Yeah. try um, EQing my reverb here. I'm going to do this. I forgot to pull out the low end. Um, and I want this to be joined with a pad. I think this is a little bit a little bit um, brittle right now. I kind of want it to be like a, a big, you know, spacious wash of sound. My pad right now is this. Um, let's hear it. Uh, it's cool, but I think I want it to have mo more motion. Um, I actually think I'm going to put that um, ping pong. Um, with a wide That's neat. Um, and I'm going to give it a um, tremolo, I think. Tremolo is when the volume fluctuates. Um, <laughs> that's pretty tight. I love it. Um, okay, let's see what that feels like coming in at the same time as that bass. I'm just going to play it on the keyboard. It's good, but those are the wrong chords. <laughs> um, I forgot what note I enter on. And it's, uh, I'm sort of coming in on that D. Um, I might just draw these in because I didn't think about it as something that I'm gonna play. So. Okay, let's see if that feels like a good chord to enter on. So um, something that I'm remembering now that I'm doing this with this, um, these 
like really open sounding chords with no middle notes um is the the deep dungeon soundtrack in Final Fantasy Tactics that's a wonderful wonderful dungeon music in my opinion and it uses these really open uh intervals fourths or fifths I don't recall um but I'm going to try copying that um uh, that shape and moving it around in parallel to see if that feels good Yeah, um, I'm relatively happy with that, and I think it's as good a starting point as any. Um, and cool, we're off to the races. We have a song. Um, so now I just need to uh, figure out what to do with it. <laughs> um, I think I said uh, Doppler effect it. Um, um, yeah, as far as spacious chords versus dense ones, it's sort of a, I guess, a personal taste thing. Um relatively spacious chords end up being a bit more ambiguous and they transpose well. So they let you get away with doing stuff in, um, in, um, less, um, defined key centers. Um, and you can do so without implying, you know, major or minor things like that. Like we could make these chords, um, sort of like have the implication of major or minor. Let's hear that. I just think it's a little bit more mysterious without that metal note. And um, you could add more notes and make it sound jazzy, I suppose. I might as well just, you know, let's do a little. hear what it sounds like if they're if we wanted to jazz it up you'd add an extra third on top and uh, you would voice these chords differently of course but, um let me oh my computer just really doesn't like to undo what i'm streaming does it it's making all kinds of clicks and pops um so anyway, I think it sounds more mysterious, a little bit more open, a little bit more barren uh, when it has uh, less notes. And it's, you know, the idea is, um, are you, um, you know, if you use every note, it sounds like, uh, you know, like that, right? And you just, music's about choosing what notes not to play more than it is about choosing which notes to play. Um, and it's choosing which, which positions not to play a note in rhythm as well, like where you leave the spaces sort of the important part. And most people think that because they're making the sound, they're like, you know, adding things. But I think that you're um, sort of creating a framework um, for which people perceive uh, space and sound. And you're sort of removing things from that framework that you make. So your groove or your, you know, entire like sonority, sonority of your sound is going to be like your, um, your block of marble and you're chipping away at it. And, you know, you take a chunk out and people are going to notice that. But if you keep, you know, playing the same thing over and over again, um, it just becomes a, like a trance boring Steve Reich kind of a sound. Um, and um, not that Steve Reich is boring, but um, I think that's the idea of his music is that like the fact that he's essentially deconstructed that one piece of it and um, that piece of it becomes boring um, makes you pay attention to all the other parts that you normally wouldn't pay attention to. And the music's about the other parts that um, don't get the shine in any other genre, really. So um, that's really what you got going on. But I think I'm going to try two repeats with this, and I'm going to really kind of um, lean into that um, idea of Doppler effect influence and see if I can get away with just a direct modulation to like going down a half step. This often sounds really gross and doesn't work, but... Um, because we're using this open harmonic structure and we're not really implying uh, a really strong key center, there's definitely a key center, but we're not implying a strong one. I think I can get away with this and we're going to have to listen to it from the beginning to find out. And I'm going to drink some tea.
I need to hear what it sounds like going back in here. Yeah, um, I don't like that approach. I'm going to delete those and I'm going to actually um, change this. I wanted this to be a different chord the second time. something like that. Something like that could work. Um, and what if the bass comes in later? And this just a little bit more of a gradual entrance. Let's see how that feels. Ooh, it's really barren. That gets the vibe going that I want a little bit better, I think. I think I'm going to give it really washy, kind of a lead sound. Um, I'm going to give it this uh, Moog style 4 pulp filter, sort of like a, um, you know what could be cool actually is, I guess we can't key track it like you can. I'm gonna give this um, that same type of parameter modulation with the LFO, and I guess it needs a home here. That sounds great, that's exactly what I want. Cool, didn't even have to think about it, it just worked. I love it when that happens. Sometimes I'll spend like six hours on sound design and sometimes it's just cool. Um, and let me just see how this feels um, going straight in. could live with that uh, coming in at the same measure as the bass, but not right away. Uh, so I am going to do that and I'm going to start on another ambiguous note. And these are really extreme compared to what I was getting. I think it's because um, I um, am affecting it with the volume, so. Perfect. I need that. in the wrong spot rhythmically. Um, it, after hearing it, it sounds like it should be starting one, um, one note earlier. So let's just hear it in context and see if it feels good. Yeah, I think that I sort of imagined it more like that. Yeah, something along the lines of that. And um, I'm gonna give that a repeat as well. 
And I think we are going to use that repeat. And again, do something quite a bit different on this last note since that note changes. But at this point, we're gonna to need to hear it in context again, as usual. Making music is lots of listening to your own music and getting sick of listening to music. <laughs> I just like imagined that. Um, yeah, why not? Iron Maiden up this melody. notes. Okay. And I kind of feel like I have to commit to that um, two part stuff if I start it. So let me just hear that again and see if I actually want to spend the time doing it. to be different. give it that same vibe where the phrase ends with that um, that thing where it gets someone joins in maybe the second horn player jumps out from behind the curtain <laughs> yeah um, it's tolerable uh, yeah, yeah, I do um, listen to Dungeon Synth while playing D&D um, almost once a week. Uh, sometimes I don't like listening to music when I play D&D, and I have the luxury of making that choice for myself because my group meets on Zoom now um, because of, you know, the pandemic. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's fun getting to choose sort of my own soundtrack now instead of um, being... Um, expected to enjoy listening to whatever the DM plays. Um, and he's got great taste. Um, when he's DMing, he's usually uh, using, he likes the, the Legend of Mana soundtrack and uh, the Final Fantasy nine soundtrack. I don't remember which Final Fantasy he usually puts on, to be honest. But um, yeah, when I do it by myself, I'll put on, um, what's the one I usually use? Uh, I really like Guild of Lore for D&D. <laughs> I don't know if you've listened to them. Uh, but yeah, Guild of Lore is probably one of my favorite like D&D &D, uh, &D soundtrack musics. Um, I'll put that in the chat, actually. Um, I'll put a link to this. Uh, which one is it? This one's great. Um, um, Uh, here we go. Yeah, that album's awesome. Um, it's one of my favorite D&D soundtracks. Um, anyway, uh, do, 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 do. I guess the next step is deciding if this sort of vibe continues. Um, and I'm almost thinking that uh, we 
go back to just that drip again. And um, you know what? Drips sort of go boop, don't they? Uh, what if I did this? Um, yeah, actually, I think I like that more. I'm glad I had that idea. Um, how do I want to do this? How fast should that be? I guess I could meter it. This is sort of like a, um, I guess, a, um, what do you call it? Like eight bit style of thing in, in like uh, tracker music, you'll sort of design your envelope <laughs> and you'll sort of like create your envelope shape and um, almost, it's almost like in pixels. But um, let's see how this feels. Yeah, I actually like that more. Um, let's do that. Then. And I'll set the grid back to, I think I was on eight notes, right? Yeah. Let's see if I like that more overall. Give it a little bit more motion and <laughs> I'm gonna give it an even more of a like uh, sort of really eight bit vibe. Um, let's give it a. <laughs> oh, but I've got a release on it. Um, I guess that's gonna be a problem then. Um, let's take the release off and we'll make the note value longer. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that will be again on eighth notes, I think is where I want that. Um, oh God, didn't think this through. Oh, not triplets though. Straight. <laughs> That's a really wild sound. Um, it's a little bit more exciting. I think it's actually worse, but it's more exciting. So that's, I'm fine with that. Let's hear it in context. to continue, doesn't it? Um, um, it needs to go to... Um, I'm not sure where that would go. That's kind of weird, but it might do the job. Um, I also think that I want these um, these lower notes in the arrangement. I'm holding shift to grab these bottom ones up by themselves. Um, I'm gonna make those quite a bit lower in volume. Um, 
like that or so. And then again over here. Uh, this one too, quite a bit lower in volume. And I think this is gonna help a lot. And this is gonna help a lot too. And this note here, It's going to fill in that chord, and this is going to be the first time that we get like a solidly a sort of a minor chord. And I think that I can make this get a bit more aggressive. And I'll. Um, do that by, you know what? This uh, pad thing will sound super cool and aggressive on that. Um. Yeah, I actually like that. It's almost like a brass uh, pad. And um, I will take this pad sound and do something new with it. Why not? YOLO. It's almost like a glass harmonica up here. If you don't know what that instrument is, look it up. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and I think at this point, I can actually get the plucks to really um, start to shine. Um, I'm going to make them go double time, and I'm going to do something with them. And I haven't decided what yet, so bear with me. But this stuff is going to stay the same, and the plucks are going to start becoming a percussion instrument, I think. They sort of already are, but... Um, oops, I don't want to do that at all. Those extra notes are going to get in the way of what I want to do, so I'll leave them implied by putting them just on the first note. Hmm. I am Eris says, um, new EP the other day, got some Kobold and Zelda vibes coming from it. Oh, Kobold. Yeah, Kobold is awesome. Um, and yeah, uh, Zelda and Kobold are both... Uh, you know, actually, things that I like very much. Uh, so that's a huge compliment. Thank you. Um. And, um... So let's just see if this vibe works. Cool, yeah. Um, 
I'm going to keep building up and getting uh, higher and higher in pitch here. Bum, 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 bum. Note that works. Maybe that. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I love those. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I love um, my, <laughs> like... Um, what is that? G Genova Final Fantasy VII? Oh. Whatever that song is, yeah. I think I <laughs> sat on the couch next to my brother playing through that area too many times. Um, he would he used to farm the items and stuff like that, so he would play those old uh, RPGs, like, nonstop, and I would just sit on the couch and just, like, this is so cool. I wish he'd let me play. Um, but yeah, that's one area that just you just end up stuck in for a while, I think, in uh, no, it's FF7. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, totally digging that vibe, uh, but it sort of needs to keep going and, and grow. Um, so, let's do that. Um, bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 da, da, da. that uh, might do the trick um, and let's just see how that feels if it's repeating I like I, this one like this EP that I'm working on right now for whatever reason it's feeling like um, I don't know it's feeling like Minecraft or something like I want it to just sort of last even if it's kind of boring I kind of want it to be more of a vibe than a melodic thing so I'm gonna see if I can get away with keeping this as a repeating idea without making it feel too much like it needs to um, I don't know, go somewhere. I think a lot of music really feels like it needs to just go somewhere. And in this context, I want to do something that sort of does the opposite of that. It wants to be like, you're stuck here. Okay. You're like, like that, that gate's rusted shut and you're, you're stuck. There's monsters behind you, freedom ahead of you, but the gate's rusted stuck, shut. So you're stuck. Let's see. Do we get that vibe? <laughs> Looks like I forgot to put these in. Uh, uh, I am Air is asking, do you have any vids about the actual synthesis of sound? I couldn't find any and think that would be a great utility for some people. Um, so I actually, uh, did a great deal of the sound design for this, um, f for these sounds with the the stock plugins in in Reaper, um, at the beginning of the live stream. So in this recap, you'll see how I made these mostly. Um, I did have starting points that were vaguely similar to the ones that I made from scratch in the live stream on Sunday, Saturday. I can't remember, but I do also have a series on that. Um, the first five videos or so um, in my Dungeon Synthesis series cover that. And I'm going to link to you uh, in the chat here uh, where I do cover that. They're not 
the best videos, but they are sort of directed towards um, uh, dungeon synth uh, using using this type of synthesis in dungeon synth because dungeon synth sort of traditionally is more like um, like Casio style, like a, um, um, a pulse distortion synthesis or phase distortion synth synthesis rather, and um, most of those sounds are presets. Um, also, uh, PCM synthesis is really popular. So, like, uh, synthesis that combines a sample and synthesis. Um, and, again, uh, most of those sounds are, are going to be sort of, like, uh, largely presets. And if you're doing your own sound design with a very, very primitive synth like this, you end up with the almost, like, Game Boy type sound, which I really love. I love that type of uh, vibe. So, um, yeah, that, that series does cover um, a great deal of what you need to know. Um, I think I need to redo it uh, because I made that series partially as like a reward for myself for learning that it's possible to uh, to do this in just stock reaper plugins. It's like that, what's that video meme? It's like a reward or what, whatever that meme is. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a couple of things that I do in that series that I want to, um, I guess, amend. Uh, the big one being that I you don't need to use repitch at all. Um, you could just automate your uh, tuning on the synth um, for things like vibrato and stuff. I don't know how I had that oversight, but I did. <laughs> uh, okay, what do you have here? Those I found in the first place from the synth. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that in those videos, I sort of cover like the first few steps of synthesis in... Um, in the first five videos, and then I go into more arrangement and stuff, like how you can use that to make a, a dungeon synth song. So, um, yeah, why don't you, um, uh, like, um, I feel like, it, do you want to get in touch with me, actually? And uh, maybe we can talk about that, and you can tell me, like, what specific things you, you think would be interesting to do, because I've been, you know, just exploring different ideas for videos, and I've been kind of wanting to do something like a little bit more uh, digestible than the dungeon synthesis ones. Cause you sort of have to already know what you're doing with this. Um, and I, I kind of, uh, I'm not totally sure where the best place to start with that with a video is. Cause a lot of synthesis stuff is easiest hands on. I teach a synthesis class actually. And we use not like a mini mug, but uh, we use usually a synth like that. And um, it's easier to be like, here's the cutoff of the filter and you turn the knob and it, goes wow and it's like exciting but again that's um that's also for kids and i like synthesis for kids and synthesis for adults at a beginner level i think you approach differently and yeah i'm uh <laughs> scatterbrained tonight as you can tell um, i drank way too much coffee today which is the reason i'm live streaming in the middle of the night in the first place well i guess it's only about 10 p.m where i am but you know say levy um, let's see. And I think that I copied these. And I want to start, um, sort of building this up a little bit, I guess. Um, Don't worry about the flow of the stream. That's just a stream. That's why I do the live streams because I, I actually like. Um, I feel like I um, when I interact with people, I I'm able to be a little bit more creative with the content I'm using in the song because I'm experiencing other people's ideas. And even if the ideas aren't related to the music, I I promise it helps. I wouldn't do this stuff if it didn't make creating music easier. Um, so yeah, ask away, chat away. Um, this is like my equivalent of the just chatting streams people do on Twitch, except that I'm doing something at the same time. 
Um, okay, so I just made this part. <laughs> um, and I think it's really cool, but I haven't listened to it yet. So let's do that. Um, I liked most of it. There were some parallel seconds in here that were a strange touch, but they weren't horrible. Yeah, I like that more. Um, and this bad boy over here is going to be the same ish thing with different notes at the end again just following that same sort of a form oh but the notes change below it um you know what <laughs> let's just go hog wild with this and go into 16th notes um i love doing this type of stuff I have a project called uh, Yaga Shura that's um, <laughs> sort of like all the really fast sequence stuff. And I, I don't know, I get really, um, I guess, a, somewhat, uh, somewhat like hyper fixated on this stuff. change this garbage right there. Last note, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nito. Um, that might be enough of a buildup, and that sort of feels like a climax. Um, and I don't like ending on climaxes. I like giving a little bit of like a, you know, a, a slow, um, slow uh, de-escalation. And um, so something that I do, um, this is sort of like a, a thing that a lot of composers do. Um, and a lot of times they do it without realizing it, which surprises me. I'll, I'll talk about this with people and they'll, they'll realize they haven't noticed that they're doing this naturally. And it is, um, a lot of people have heard of the um, things like golden ratio, silver ratio, things like that, where you have like something that's, um, you know, that looks like a, a spiral shell of a snail or something like that. And uh, it's always like a, something like a, you know, two thirds or one third, somewhere close to that. And, um, it doesn't need to be exact, but, um, people will often put their climax, you know, right in that spot where it would fit into that. One of those, like, um, you know, ratios that sort of appears in nature all the time. So in this song, if I'm eyeballing it, um, I feel like the song ends right here. Um, if this is the climax, uh, somewhere in this range is where the ending is, I think. Um, so I'm going to put a marker there and I'm going to, um, uh, see if I can, you know, get this a little bit less exciting and then less exciting. And then, um, uh, finally end up right back where I started with that drip. And I'm going to see if, um, that type of a structure works. Cause that fits my, um, my idea of what the flow of a song is often ends up sounding good as. So I might need to uh, do some stuff like maybe this, uh, maybe these need to be switched actually um, because I want the horns to get less intense instead of more intense. Um, 
Okay, so I'm gonna listen to it from here and see if that de-escalation sounds okay. And I'm out of tea, which is disappointing, but I'll tolerate it uh, because I'm only gonna have this live stream open for about five more minutes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't think the notes are exactly where they need to be, but um, that um, general structure of that, that uh, what I call like a de-escalation um, of that intense um, section on that track labeled lead uh, is exactly what I think I'm looking for here. And um, this, the way that it sort of becomes that drip again at the end. It's like perfect for the, the classic video game loop. Or if it loops around, it goes to the beginning again, yeah. Okay. And uh, at this point, um, I might do a little bit of my usual uh, panning for a track like this, where maybe the pluck is on one side a little bit, the lead's on the other side a little bit. save the track too, that's probably important. And I might, I haven't done this before. You know, this might actually sound cool. I'm gonna dump all of this in a bus track. And lo-fi if I, so I'm gonna try doing some sort of lo-fi processing on this entire bus just to see what it feels like. The reason I'm not doing this on my master track, if you're wondering, um, is because if I do it on my master track, my voiceover for this is actually going through my master track as well, I think. I can't remember how the routing is. I guess I should check. Yeah, it's got a master sound. That's how I'm doing it. Um, okay, so basically if I put processing on my master track, I'll just do it for fun. Um, it's going to hit my voice, so if I go like this, it'll be like, hey, it's me talking, it's me talking, it's me talking. yeah, so that's a big no-no, um, but this, if I put a saturation, maybe a EQ, um, let's just see what happens. Okay, cool. Um, dang, uh, that, I think that's turning out um, better than I expected it to. So anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, if you have questions beyond this, um, hopefully I make it pretty obvious how you can reach me. 
Um, if nothing else, just comment on one of my videos um, and uh, tune in next time. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later.